Hi everyone, so today I'd like to chat with you about hookahs or coral bells as they're commonly known. Last year I decided I wanted to add some coral bells to my garden and give them another try. It just so happened Home Depot had some on sale, so I decided to indulge, but I was really after the autumn colored hookahs that are more of the oranges and yellows because those are my colors basically in my garden. So I ended up buying more of a red hookra just to get that fall color. And the tag said they were zone three. So I thought, perfect, they're great for my climate, whereas the autumn colored ones and some of the green ones were more fours to nines. So I purchased the red colored hookras, brought them home, and I planted them on October 4th in the garden. And you can see here in the video, these are the ones that I bought and planted and they all looked really, really good, and they did very well. So I was super happy with them, and they gave me the color I wanted. But I also was a little iffy on them because I had planted hookahs before in the garden, and they did not survive the winter, even though they were supposedly zone three. Well, boy, was I wrong believing tags because hookahs are not zone three. They are zone four to nine. So really, for us in the colder climates, they are not a suitable plant for our landscape at all. But I had already bought them. I basically drank the poison or drank the Kool-Aid and wanted that foliage color so bad that I put them in believing they were a three. Prior times when I had grown hookahs in the garden, they didn't survive the winter. And I put them in the front garden, but more on the other side in front of the big picture window and they did not make it. They shriveled all up. But I did cut them back and make a few mistakes. At least I think they were beginner mistakes uh, with my hookah. So I did things differently this time, and I'll show you the results as we go through this video. But I just wanted you to see how late I planted these in the fall and the chance I took. Plus they're on sale, so I thought it's worth a shot. I got some fall foliage, they'll work for some videos, perfect. So when you go to the big box stores and you see all these beautiful hookahs or coral bells and you'd see the shades of the reds, red blacks, some of the yellow oranges, which is the one that I crave, um, the different shades of greens and you are craving color for your garden. You kind of get caught up in the moment of wanting some of these beautiful plants. And if you combine that with a sales price tag on them, well, you definitely get caught up and you're like, yes, I got to have some of these. Then you look at the labels and the labels show you that they are good for a zone three and up or as in three to nine. Then that's it. You're sold, right? Because it's for your climate. Everything's working out perfectly. Timing's good. You got the budget for it. Fabulous. And then those tags. Well, the tags are kind of evil because tags are misleading on a lot of plants. We are told that they are for our climate and that they're good to, well, on these tags, minus 40 degrees, which means they can tolerate our harsh, cold winters. But in reality, they're meant for climates four to nine. Now, I know a lot of gardeners say you can push your climates, as in you can go one zone up, one zone down, four plants. But hookahs are a little different because hookahs lifespan, no matter what zone you're in, is three to four years. If you're lucky, you might be able to push it another year, but they are very short lived. And as you can see here from the one here in the red in the video here, it's at the end of its life, right? It's already browning in the crown. So the key thing with hookahs here is to be very leery of the zones and the climate you're in. If you're in one of these zones from four to nine, then you should be able to grow these, but they still will be short-lived at three to four years. Plus, they do get a disease called Puccini, and that sounds like an Italian pasta, but it's the little spots on the leaves that you see here, that one's got it, and it's called rust, and it's a fungus. So you wanna avoid plants in any of the stores or nurseries that have those spots on them, because that can affect the rest of your plants. And if you do have plants at home that you already have purchased that have that, pick those leaves off immediately 
and don't throw them in the compost bin. Bag them up and get rid of them right out of your garden and then treat your plant with a fungicide. Anyhow, the problem with hookahs is the fact that they aren't good for my zone. So I actually bought them and I pushed it, not realizing, because the tag said three, that they were for four to nine. And I did do my research, you guys, and still, with the temperatures and saying good to minus 40, I thought, perfect, I'm going to try them again. I had grown them in the past and they had not done well. I had planted them out in the spring. Um, the following year, they did not come back. They were brown and crispy and crunchy. And I cut them back, which was a big, big mistake because they need that winter protection of those leaves. So note to anyone in a colder climate trying to go grow hookahs or has bought them and planted them, don't cut your plants back in the fall. Leave them until they start showing strong growth in the spring, then remove those dead leaves after all danger of frost because they are very temperamental. Now with hookahs only living three to four years, sometimes they will have an offshoot that will come off of that plant that they will sit down beside the plant, which provides an opportunity to carry those plants onward and continue to grow them without having to buy them all the time. But sometimes they don't and they will die out in the center of the plant and you will see like the one in this video, it was dying out in the center of the plant but it also had some babies in that center of the plant. So technically, looking at this plant closely, you can see in the center the babies and you can clean this plant out if it's, you have this at home in your garden, get rid of all the brown root rot and save that center and replant it. And you will be able to carry it on for another three to four years. So keep an eye on those things and for offshoots that will help keep your plants growing in your garden. But this is a sad state of affairs for a hookah in a big box store because it's on its deathbed right now. Because, of course, they aren't well looked after in these stores and the watering is sporadic. Now, how do you care for hookahs? Hookahs don't like to be too wet. They don't like to be too dry. They like to be planted in soil that doesn't have a lot of fertilizer, that hasn't been overly compost added, and they just like to be left alone. So for me growing them and carrying them over, and I planted them last October, your best bet is plant them, soak them in good for winter, or leave them alone. Don't remove that foliage. Don't do anything to them. Wait in the spring until all danger of frost has passed, and then when you see some strong growth coming off them, then remove the dead foliage. And to remember that the life is three to four years, so enjoy them while you can because they will not survive beyond that unless you get some offshoots to save. Hookers are good in containers. They provide that color of foliage that just makes them beautiful for containers. You will need to add them and plant them into the ground in the fall. Like I said, I planted mine in October directly from a big box store, but if I had them in containers, I'd be putting them into the ground at that time too, where I can get them watered in for a good three or four weeks prior to the first snowfall or freeze, hard frost. So beware of that if you're putting them into containers. Those of you in warmer climate zones, four to nine, you still probably should put them into the ground after the container season is over to be able to carry them forward and give them a chance to survive the long winter season. Even though your winters aren't as harsh, they still need that time to put on roots and to gain some strength and some energy. Because growing in containers is hard on plants. And please do not give them a lot of fertilizer or add a lot of compost because they just don't like it. They like to be left alone to do their own thing. And we as gardeners tend to sometimes give a little too much love to our plants when they don't necessarily require it. So you will notice that I do add manure and compost, but not every single year. I will mix it up from year to year. But they are beautiful and I am in love with them. So let's have a look at how mine are doing today after a long cold winter that had crazy snow and crazy weather. So here are the hookahs I planted last year. Those that are closer to the north, even though they're getting west sun, aren't as big as the ones that are closer to the south that get west sun. But they're getting a lot of sun. 
in the center of this bed, which I think is a benefit. But the key, if I leave you with any information on hookahs, is plant them, water them, and ignore them. Don't overcompost, don't fertilize. Once they're established a year, then fertilize them like once a year. But just enjoy them and they will come back for three or four years. And if you feel they're worthwhile in your garden, then you may have to buy some more and replant unless you get offshoots. I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope it's helpful and I'll see you in the next video. Everyone, thank you for watching and take care.